Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really, really well. Topic of this video is going to be Linux basics and kind of a list of useful commands and ways to get around the terminal. So quick upfronts. First, I'm not actually using Linux. I'm actually on a Mac, but some of the commands we're going to go through and kind of tools are so basic that they kind of are applicable to any Linux like environment, including Mac and other things. All right. Second, Thing to just mention is that this video is geared towards anybody that's interested in kind of navigating or moving around the terminal and I know that might not be everyone so that's probably developers um, people who want to maybe get into Linux a little bit more so if you think this video could be irrelevant for you just stop watching no problem and I have a list here of some of the things I just jotted down a couple things that I find particularly useful and we're gonna run through them pretty quickly all right and this video it's going to be a little fast so if anything doesn't make sense just pause the video look up the command read about something that I'm doing and just kind of learn it the hard way and I'm not gonna spoon feed you too much stuff here we're just gonna run through this list and hopefully it's helpful all right so let's just get started all right so what we're starting with is a completely empty directory that I made here called playground and it's just gonna be our sandbox for doing some of the things in this video all right so first thing we're going to do is just create a really simple text file called foobar and what i did here is just write a really simple sentence the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog into foobar and it's one file inside our directory so let's just look at it real quick here it is that's the file 45 bytes something really simple all right the first command that we have to introduce real quickly is grep, which is one of the most basic commands in this whole system. And you have to understand how this works to pretty much do anything. So let's just go through the basic syntax of grep. You're, you're just going to grep some word here, some any word you want in a particular file. And you can actually grep not only inside a file, but throughout a buffer and it can be very flexible but let's just try it first to search for some words inside foobar so it's not going to find this inside foobar we actually know we wrote fox so it should find the word fox in there and yes it does properly um, so pretty much we're using grep to search for basic strings inside this file all right and I encourage everyone to read about more commands there's many options you can pass into grep such as case insensitivity, but overall, please just read up, learn, and try it yourself using this command, and it's so useful, all right? That's just basics. Next command to just introduce is another super basic command called find that everyone should understand. So let's just go through a quick example of find. So what how it works is we're gonna find inside some directory, and dot is actually a shortcut for current working directory and I want to find a file called foo so it actually doesn't find anything because find it takes the exact you have to match it with the pattern here and we're not finding anything called foo so what we can do is add some wild cards and it finds foobar because foobar has the word foo in it all right so we can get, make find a little more complicated like find inside my workspace this is where I keep a lot of my code any file that has the word code in its name and this is going to probably turn a bunch of stuff yes it does and that's just a little more specific way to use find um, now um, what I think is particularly interesting is introducing this concept of piping which is usually used in conjunction with grep but it's particularly useful so let's just say that this is too much information to handle finding every single file with the word code in it and what if I want to filter this out a little more well there's a special command called the pipe command which is this vertical line in which you inject the output of one program into another program so we're going to inject the output of this find into grep and we're going to specifically look for some word and what this does here is that it executes that find, but then it injects its results into grep, which then searches for the word grep. And now we have all files in my workspace with the word code in it, as well as inside this WIC project that I have. So 
this is a really good use case of a pipe and usually you pipe things into grep this is very common so we're going to go through a lot of examples where we're going to pipe stuff into grep just to kind of filter it down more and find is just one example of something that you might want to pipe to grep all right so that's grep and find please um do a little more reading on these two basic commands they're really useful and let's just keep it going one thing I also want to bring up here is that you can make shortcuts for many of these things. So I actually shortcutted find with FF and let's just see how that works real quick. If I look at my bash RC file, what I have here is a couple of aliases which map FF to actually a function which uses find. So I encourage everyone to check this out to make your typing a little simpler if you want to type a little less characters. So instead of typing this, you could just type maybe ff foo grep foo or something and make life a little easier with some aliases all right so everyone i encourage everyone to try that out just save yourself some typing all right next super important thing we have to do that you're going to do all the time is check your processes and the main way to check your processes is through ps which lists active processes and you can see them all here that are running it's too much to digest at this moment but it pretty much will list everything that's running on your computer and you can just see that it's a ton of stuff all right so as always like we mentioned before we can use the pipe command to make this list a little more manageable so i want to list all the processes that have the word safari in it all right so actually this only gives me five back i have five processes that are Safari related. So whatever the safe browsing is, whatever these services are, Safari history, all this random stuff. So let's just do a quick example of it. Let's just actually open up Safari. That's open. Um, let me just run that again. You can see now that we have, there was five running up here. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven additional processes running just because I started the application. All right, so another command that's particularly useful that I just want to introduce is how to kill a command. So kill, you'll kill any process by its ID. Um, let's just look up the ID, which is this column. And that's gonna close Safari and it's closed. Killing it here on the command line is just equivalent as clicking the X button on the Safari list. All right, so super convenient command you're going to have to list processes all the time if you want to kill processes you can kill dash nine it um, and that's another basic thing to do all right okay next super useful command that we're going to introduce is listing the ports on your computer that are actually open or listening and if you're a developer um, you'll probably always be curious about which ports are open which ones have connections established to them if you have no idea what a port is, I encourage everyone to go read about what that means. But this command right here will list all ports that are currently listening on your system. So here we just have a couple ports that are open. You think Spotify has some, um, whatever this is, I ha um, Ruby has some. So what these are actually, I have a couple of projects in Ruby that are listening, that are web applications that listen on these ports. So I have I have one on 3,000, one on 7,000, one on 9,000. And all these are, are these are actually web applications because I know I'm running them. Um, again, with a command like this, if you want to find all listening ports that are Ruby process related, you could grep for Ruby and have, oh, I have four Ruby processes listening on these four things. All right. Another cool thing to do is that by default, this command will return all processes that are listening that I own. If you want to do it for all processes on the system, you'll have to do a sudo front here. Uh, and let's just look at that a little more clearly. But now we're listing all processes that not only I'm running, but other users in the system are running. So Postgres, which is a database, is actually has a listening open on 5432, which is the default Postgres port if you guys have ever used this database. So if you want to look for listening ports from the whole computer, just stick a sudo 
in front of this command. All right, super useful command, and especially for development purposes, when you want to see what kind of applications you have running, which ports are kind of being used, you can use this, and it's incredibly helpful. All right. Okay, let's just go back to our file real quick. If you guys remembered earlier, we created this file of foobar, which is ha which has our sentence in there. So let's just go back to that real quick. You can actually call ls on a specific file. So if I call ls that ls-l on foobar, what's particularly useful is that it lists additional information, including the size of this file, which just happens to be 45 bytes. And let me just prove that that's the actual size of the file. So I'm going to write some extra crap into foobar. And you should see that this file size does increase a little bit just because I wrote um, a bunch of this stuff. All right. So particularly useful to just get a quick look at the size of any file on your system. All right. Um, another particularly useful command is du, which is disk usage. And you can do disk usage on any directory inside your system. And let's just call it disk usage on our current working directory. And it shows that, hey, for this directory, we have four kilobytes of disks of disk space used for foobar. All right, so um, I guess one thing that's a little strange is that when we ls.l foobar, we see that it only takes 100 bytes. So why does it take 400 kilobytes on disk? Well, this is actually a subtle point that we can talk about real quickly, but a file's disk space usage is different than the size that it actually takes up, all right? So if we just check out foobar real quick, we'll see that it takes up four kilobytes on disk, but it's actually only 100 bytes big. So this is actually just a major difference. Four kilobytes on disk is kind of like the minimum chunk or block size for the file system. So at the very minimum, any single file that's created on our system, inside our file system, is going to be at least 4 kilobytes. And inside those 4 kilobytes, only 100 bytes are used. All right. So that's a subtle difference between the size that is actually being used in the file and the amount of space it's taking up on disk. So if you guys ever encounter this size on disk versus size, you know how it's different. All right. So Let's just do a quick test here to see if we can actually make this a little bigger. Right now it's four kilobytes and let's just see if we can make it more than four kilobytes. So um, how are we gonna do this? Let's just do it a very manual way. So I'm gonna take this, just copy these lines. Just keep copying a lot of lines. This is the simplest way to make a huge file, guys. All right. So that file should be significantly bigger now. Um, if we look at our list, we can see that, oh, wow, now it's 142 kilobytes almost, right? So now since the file is actually this bigger, this much bigger, we should see the disk usage increase appropriately. So let's just call du again. And we say, yes, it does actually increase. Now it's 140, 140 kilobytes on disk, and the byte size is 142,952 bytes. All right, so disk usage, really useful to get directory file size usage, and also ls-l, really useful to get the size of any particular file. All right, so that's about it. Um, let's see, what else do I have on this list? Um, I have a few more things on the list, but I actually only have one minute left in this video as these screencasts are always 15 minutes long. So I'll do a quick recap. Um, we went through quickly what grep is, what is find. We searched, we talked about a way to check your processes and kill processes. We checked, we talked about a way to list your ports, um, listen, list your open ports, sorry. And finally, we talked about a way to check file sizes. So these are all really, really basic commands and like minimum table stake stuff everyone should know to get around Linux. Hopefully it's helpful. I encourage everyone just to read more about it. Maybe we watch this video. I'm not even sure if this was helpful. We did, we did go through things very fast, but I hope it was. So thanks guys and I'll see everyone 
next time. All right.